Well, thank you for joining us on this Good Friday. You know, when we read the gospel accounts, this was a long, hard day for Jesus. The night before he and his disciples were gathered at the Garden of Gethsemane, when all of a sudden Judas, a disciple of Jesus, arrived with a band of soldiers and had him arrested. They led Jesus away first to the high priest, and then early in the morning they led him to Pontius Pilate. They had one goal, and that was to have Jesus executed. Well, Pilate questioned Jesus, but found no guilt in him worthy of punishment. But as was his custom, Pilate offered to release a prisoner at Passover. He offered to release Jesus, but the people chose a criminal named Barabbas instead of Christ. Well, Pilate had Jesus flogged. Well, I don't know how much you know about flogging, but they would take a whip made up of several strips of leather, and at the end of each piece of leather would be bone fragments and metal. They would take this instrument of torture and whip a person across the back with it. Every time this whip would make contact with the person's skin, the bone and the metal would pull chunks away from that person. This is what they did to Jesus. And as if that wasn't enough, the soldiers then took him and made a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him with a purple robe, mocked him as king of the Jews, and then led him out once again in front of the people. Well, Pilate once again declared that he had found no guilt in Jesus whatsoever. But when the chief priests saw Jesus and the officers, they yelled, crucify him, crucify him. Pilate told him, I find no guilt in him. You crucify him. He led Jesus back into his headquarters. Once again, questioned him even more. Pilate again sought to release Jesus, but the crowds cried out even more. And in the end, Pilate gave in to the crowd's desires and had Jesus crucified. They took Jesus out. They made him carry his own cross and led him to a place called Golgotha, the place of the skull. And there they crucified him, nailing him to that cross. They put a sign over his head. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. They took his clothes, divided them up, and cast lots for his tunic. There Jesus was, dying the death we deserve, dying in our place, paying the price you and I owe. Well, knowing that he had now accomplished the purpose for which his father had sent him, Jesus said, I thirst. They held a sponge uh, full of sour wine up to his mouth, and when Jesus had received it, he said, It is finished. He bowed his head, and Jesus was dead. Before we sing about what Jesus did for us on the cross and remember this Good Friday, <clears throat> I thought it was appropriate to read a prophetic passage from Isaiah 53 talking about everything that Jesus did for us leading up to the cross in his life and in his death and how he fulfilled this for us. He took on our sin, our transgressions. This is Isaiah 53. <clears throat> Who has believed what he has heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men. A man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. As one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. We esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. By his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, and yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, like a sheep that's before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. 
By oppression and judgment he was taken away, and as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of his people. They made his grave with the wicked, with a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. Mm -hmm. He has put him to grief. He makes his soul an offering for guilt. And we shall see, he shall see his offering. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous. He shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors, yet he bore the sin of many and makes intercession for the transgressors. Sing this song with us as we remember what Jesus did as a man of sorrows, the one who went to the cross for us.
As a church, we've been working through the book of Galatians, and here we are on Good Friday, and we find ourselves looking at the final words of Paul in this letter to the church at Galatia. If you have a Bible with me, I'm going to ask that you open it to Galatians chapter 6, verses 11 through 18. Let's read these words and then reflect on them together on this Good Friday. Paul says, See with what large letters I am writing to you with my own hand. It is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh who would force you to be circumcised, and only in order that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. For even those who are circumcised do not themselves keep the law, but they desire to have you circumcised that they may boast in your flesh. But far be it from me to boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision counts for anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. And as for all who walk by this rule, peace and mercy be upon them and upon the Israel of God. From now on, let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers. Amen. So here we are on Good Friday, the day when we find ourselves surveying the wondrous cross. And what is the one and only thing that Paul says he boasts in? The cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, some people boast in their money, their fame, their power, their possessions, their performance their family, their heritage. I mean, you think about it. Paul, before he was saved by the grace of God through faith in Christ's work on the cross, Paul would have probably boasted in his Jewish heritage, his religious works, his religious position, but not anymore. After his encounter with the risen Savior, Paul's aim was to preach Christ crucified, to boast only in the cross of Christ. Well, his opponents, well, let's just say their motives were not the same. As Paul closed out this letter, he reveals to his readers the impure motives of those men who were peddling a false gospel and adding the work of man to the work of Christ on the cross. Now, during this time, it was not unusual for somebody writing a letter to use what was called an amanuensis. Today, we would call this a secretary. And Paul would often use somebody to write his letters as he told them what to write. Well, as was similar to things Paul had done in others' letters, what he does in this letter is he grabs the writing utensil from his amanuensis and begins closing out this letter himself. Why? Because he wanted us to listen to what he's about to say. Through these final verses... Paul summarizes some of the major themes of this letter. In verses 11 through 13, as he talks about his opponent's impure motives, uh, he reveals some, some truths that he's been teaching throughout the letter. He told them about his opponents, that they, they were compelling them to be circumcised so that they would actually look good in others' eyes. See, they accused Paul at the beginning of the letter in Galatians 1.10 of being a person who was trying to please man. When the truth was, this is what they were trying to do. Paul says they wanted to make a good showing. They were compelling the Galatians to be circumcised so they would not be persecuted for preaching the cross of Christ like Paul. See, Paul was being persecuted for preaching Christ did all the work. That justification came through faith in Christ alone and not by circumcision or keeping the law of Moses. Well, his opponents didn't want to be persecuted, so they preached Christ plus circumcision to avoid persecution. So they wanted to make a good showing. They wanted to avoid persecution. They were just a bunch of hypocrites. See, Paul says they were compelling others to keep the law when they themselves weren't even keeping it. They were forcing circumcision on those Christians because they wanted to brag to others about how many proselytes they had gained. Kind of like today, if a leader brags about how many people in his church were saved or baptized. This is all they were worried about. They were just, they wanted to receive the praise of man. This is all they did. They sought to please and receive the praise of man. They were boasting in the flesh. Not Paul. He wasn't seeking the praise of man. Even though persecution was his plight, he continued to preach Christ crucified. 
While others boasted in the flesh, in the flesh of others, Paul no longer boasted in the flesh. As a result of God's grace in his life, Paul boasted in one thing. And he says in verse 14, Far be it from me to boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, Caleb, when you think about this, you've been with us and we've, as we've worked through this letter Paul wrote to the Galatians. Um, how does Paul boast only in the cross in this letter? Where do we see that? He does it all throughout the letter. Yeah, he does. It's been, it's been a fun journey. He's been doing it time and time again. And it's kind of funny because as you and I have talked before, we're like, Paul's saying the same message again. <laughs> He's telling him to turn from... Like Galatians 2.16, he clearly says, hey, you're justified through faith in Jesus, not by works. I mean, he clearly says, you are justified through faith in Jesus Christ. And so he's boasting, hey, don't put your faith in works, put your faith in Jesus. <clears throat> you know, I look at Galatians 3.13, you talk about boasting mm -hmm. in the cross. Mm -hmm. He says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it's written, cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree. So that in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles. So that we might receive the promised spirit through faith. I mean, right there, he's talking about the cross. He's boasting in the mm -hmm. cross. It is only through Christ's work on the cross that we are redeemed. That the curse is removed. Mm -hmm. He took that for us. Yeah. And he continues on, uh, loving Galatians 3.26, where he's talking about the law being our guardian. We were under the law. But then he says there in verse... Uh, 25. Now faith has come. We're no longer under the guardian. But then verse 26, for in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. So then he's boasting in Jesus and he's saying, hey, you, I'm not boasting in the law. Like, no, you're under a new guardian. That is through Jesus, faith in Jesus. Now you're, you're God's. You're under him. You're his. You're sons, daughters of God. Galatians 5, 1. A well-known verse. Mm -hmm. For freedom Christ has set us free. I, I love those words. And you think about what Christ has done on the cross for us. I mean, he has set us free mm -hmm. from the power of sin, from the penalty of sin. Mm -hmm. and, and Paul, again, is reminding us of this freedom we have in Christ, through Christ's work on the cross. Mm -hmm. And we're not submitting ourselves again to slavery, just like he brings up again here in uh, chapter 6, verse 14, he says, For the world the world has no power. You know, the world doesn't have power over us, and I'm not going to submit to the world's ways and mm -hmm. try to go back in slavery. No, I'm going to boast and walk in the way of Jesus and have faith in him alone. Well, <clears throat> I love that you brought that up. Think about the world. Chapter 6, verse 14. Far be it from me to boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me, mm -hmm. and I to the world. Man, there again, boasting in the cross. Mm -hmm. uh, I just look at this. You see, he's boasting in the cross because Paul knew that salvation was not a result of anything he had done. Mm -hmm. it, it was all because of the work of Jesus on the cross for him. Uh, I, I read this week, Tony Marita wrote this quote. He said, boasting in the cross implies that you place your confidence in Christ and his work for your salvation alone. You're, you're not trusting in your righteous or religious acts. He said, cross exalters rest everything in what Christ has done. Cross exalters believe that Jesus lived the life we could not live and died the death we should have died. Those who boast in the cross, he said, simply say this, this is for my peace, Jesus died in my place. See, boasting in the cross implies that God accepts you because of the work of Christ. You can say this, because of the cross, the wrath of God will not be poured out on you. Because of the cross, I'm united with Christ. Because of the cross, I'm dead to this world and all its claims on my life. Because of the cross, he says, I'm a new creation. Mm -hmm. he, he closed out with this, everything we enjoy as new creations is owing to the cross. Do you enjoy justification? Boast in the cross. Do you enjoy redemption? Boast in the cross. Do you enjoy adoption? Boast in the cross. Do you enjoy the Spirit? Boast in the cross. Revel in it. Rejoice in it. Live for it. Paul boasted only in the cross. So here's a question for you to consider on this good Friday as you look at the cross. What are you boasting in? Many people today are still trusting in their own work for salvation. 
They're trusting in their attendance at church and their religious works to gain themselves acceptance before God. Well, I want you to know this. There is only one way to right standing with God, and that is through faith in the person and finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. I pray today as you look at the cross, survey the work that Christ has done, hear those words, it is finished from his son, that you turn from your sins and trust in him, the only one who can save you from your sins. Christians, as you survey the wondrous cross on this Good Friday, rejoice, you are justified. Rejoice, you are redeemed. Rejoice, you are adopted. Rejoice, you have the Spirit of God, not because of any works you have done, but all because of the work of God's Son. Boast in the cross. And as you boast in the cross this Easter, don't forget, broadcast this message to everyone. You know, when I hear the words boast, Caleb, this is what I think of. I think of someone talking uh, with excessive pride. And Mm -hmm. and they're Mm -hmm. typically talking about their own performance. Mm -hmm. You think about us guys. How do we do it? Mm -hmm. You know, when you go up there and you whip me on the mountain when we're riding (laughs) mountain bikes, and we can kind of boast. We have this tendency to boast about, yeah, I beat you. I did better than you. Look what I did. Yeah. Yeah. But boasting about the cross is different. Mm -hmm. We're not boasting about our performance. Right. We're b- boasting about Christ's performance on our behalf. Look at him. And, and this is what I think about. When, when we're boasting, we're typically passionate about something. Well, mm-hmm. Paul was passionate about Christ. Mm-hmm. He was passionate about the message of the cross. So passionate was he that he, he couldn't keep his mouth closed mm-hmm. about Jesus and the cross. Mm-hmm. You know, John Stott wrote a book a number of years ago called The Cross of Christ. And he said this of boasting. The object of our boast or our glory, it fills our horizons. It engrosses our attention. It it absorbs our time and and energy. It it isn't a word, our obsession. It is our passion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This was Paul's passion, the cross Mm -hmm. of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Well, I know this. What we are passionate about is what we'll talk about. Mm -hmm. And, And I believe this. As we're boasting about the cross this Easter... If we're really passionate about it, we're going to broadcast the message of the cross to everyone. This is what we should do. And this is what you should do. And I know many of you are hearing this and you're thinking to yourself, well, how am I supposed to broadcast the message of the cross in a season of social distancing? Mm -hmm. Caleb and I are kind of glad you asked because uh, during this season of social distancing, use social media. You know, this pandemic has many people fearing Many people looking for answers, looking and searching for hope. Christ is the answer. Christ is that hope. And we have this message, the message of the cross that we can share with them. So here's our challenge to you on this Good Friday. And we're calling it this, and this is very profound, and we've really thought about this a lot. lot. We're just You're going to see our creativity pour out in this. And we're calling it uh, Tell Your Testimony. Uh, And we're actually going to encourage you to use that when you're sharing this. Here's what we want you to do. Beginning this Sunday, Easter Sunday, and running through all next week, we're asking that every one of you record and upload a two-minute or less video of your testimony to social media. You can use your phone, your iPhone, your Android. You can use your iPad, whatever you need to, to record this video. So record your testimony. Remember, two minutes or less. Share it on social media. It doesn't matter. You can use, what, Instagram. You can use Facebook. Facebook. So, so share it out there. And in your video, we're, we're asking you to, uh, to also, as you share your testimony, give people an opportunity to respond to the gospel. So, so invite them to contact you. Mm-hmm. I know on Facebook you can say message me. Yeah, DM it, me. Yeah, me. D, DM me. Thank you. Uh, i got to get these little things That's down. Right, man. Uh, but yeah, you, you can have people contact you, and, and then you can talk to them about how they can receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Mm-hmm. So if you're new to sharing your testimony, uh, here are kind of four things that I want you to remember uh, as you do this. First, tell them a little bit about your life before Christ. Mm-hmm. Uh, second, Tell them about your conversion. When, when you heard the gospel, when you responded to the gospel, that's, that's important. very important. It's very important. We need, we need to tell people the gospel. 
tell them about your life after Christ. Maybe how Christ has allowed you by his power to overcome sin in your life or, or whatever that may look like. And then fourth, give them an opportunity to respond to the gospel. Mm-hmm. And, and here's what we're going to do for you here in the next day or so. We're going to send out a sample video for you so you can watch it and see how this works and know how to do this. But, but we're hoping all of you w- will join us in boasting about the cross this Easter by broadcasting the message of the cross to everyone. So enjoy your Good Friday. And don't forget, Jesus didn't remain in the grave. That's right. And we're going to talk about this on Resurrection Sunday. We hope to see you at 9 online this Easter Sunday. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the work that you have done, the work that Jesus has done on the cross for us. God, today as we, as that song says, survey the wondrous cross, Mm -hmm. Lord, may this remind all of us, man, it's nothing we've done. It's all that he has done for us. And may we, as your children, as we boast in this cross, may we broadcast the message of the cross to all those who are lost. I pray that we see many people come to know you as Lord and Savior, even during this season of social distancing. God, thank you again for this time that we get to spend together worshiping. I pray for all those families who are listening to this. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.